All right, guys. Welcome, Coach. Welcome to the 2024 SEC tournament, baseball tournament, game 10 press conference. Joined by Tennessee head coach Tony Vitello, along with all SEC outfielder Kavaris Tears, winning pitcher AJ Causey. In a moment, Coach will give an opening statement, then we'll take questions first for the players. Marlon and Seth have wireless microphones. Please wait to be called upon and uh, identify yourself when you ask your question. Coach, if you can give us an opening statement. Yeah, this tournament is so great for all the teams in our league, and I think the league helps prepare you, but the tournament does too because you get used to media coverage, fans, chaos, um, you know, all kinds of different things. And I thought we handled it a lot better yesterday. It's not like we did anything wrong, but just everything seemed to be a little more in sync. Great attitude from our guys, even though it was definitely not a perfect game. Both teams made mistakes. I haven't looked at it close enough to know, you know, who made one more than the other. But I think, you know, because Stom and Causey uh, threw the ball so well, uh, we were able to take advantage of KT's stuff at the plate as well as the rest of the team. And it's nice to be able to play tomorrow because we kind of had a plan A for the pitching. Um, obviously, A.J. Russell was a hot topic yesterday, kind of how we wanted to handle cause. And, you know, Kirby had to put in a little extra work. Uh, but to this point, um, it looks like we'll be able to check some of the boxes we wanted to. So uh, whether we're, we're able to win the thing or not, we've accomplished a lot to this point uh, on top of what we did this season. So, All right, let's direct questions to the student athletes. Please raise your hand if you have one. In the back on the right. AJ, you've been so good after Stamos this year. Is there anything particular about him and how he pitches that you feel like you feed off of really well? I think we're two like completely different looks. Um, him being like an over-the-top lefty, me being a low slot righty. But other than that, I just think he goes out and he competes. And so it kind of calms me and makes me go out there and do what he did, basically. So yeah, it's really calming. Next one for the players on the right, third row. Um, Kavaris, Tony last week gave you all a challenge to maybe step up in a different way. In these last two weekends, you've produced at a really high level coming up in big moments. How have you been able to produce? How has that challenge maybe ignited a light in you? Uh, I think a lot of it is just faith in each other. Um, you know, if somebody doesn't get it done, then you have, you know, 100% faith in the guy behind you that he's going to get it done. So just believing in each other, I think, has the, played the biggest role. Next question for the players. They're growing the center. Kavars from facing AJ and Stamos in practice, what makes them so effective? And then how hard do you think it is for an opposing team when they have to face both those guys on the same day? Um, to answer your second question, it's not easy at all. I can tell you that. Uh, it's a tough fall facing both of them. But I think a lot of them are just, you know, very competitive. You know, they're not going to give um, batters just, you know, free, free 90s and everything is going to uh, be competitive. So I think that's the biggest uh, part with both of them. And like he said earlier, they both go out there and they just compete and leave it all out there. While we're here, who got the better at who in the fall? I don't remember. One to one. OK. One to one. <laughs> Let's keep it at that. Let's. <laughs> Next question for the players. If not, if there are no more questions for the players, then Kavars, AJ, congratulations on the win today. We'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. All right, if there are questions for Coach, please raise your hand. Wait for the microphone in the back right. Where did Stalmos' outing stack up with his best this season? You know, I, I think he's been uh, arguably a little more effective at home than on the road um, by, by at least a little bit, uh, not a ton. This is a neutral site. It's a big stage. And I never even looked. I, I don't know at Cal what his postseason experience was, whether it be in the conference tournament or, uh, you know, in a regional play or anything else. So. I don't, I don't know how, how much he's had, if any. Um, but he looked like a pro out there. And uh, I think he was, if anything, a really good balance. He, he gets fired up. I mean, I know he's not waving his fist and all that stuff. Uh, but he's a pretty intense guy. And I think that's important to manage in a setting like this. And he seemed to have a good balance of the proper intensity, but, but also having his breath under him and things like that. So where it stacks up, I'm not sure. But I think it was kind of what the doctor ordered after yesterday. Next question for Coach on the front yeah. row on the right. Have you ever in your career had a team that's used two openers on a weekend? And, and if you have used openers this much, how effective has that been in your, your experience? No, I mean, I'm just going to piggyback because we just got done visiting with the ESPN folks. Um, to me, um, we've got 
even more so than 2021 was maybe our best depth-wise position player. This is the most unselfish position player group I've ever been a part of. And so I didn't mean to wave a big flag with the run rule stuff. We've been run ruled. We've run ruled other people. Um, it's frustrating when you don't get as many at-bats spread around some of these guys. Uh, we just kind of, you know, take one away from Reese and give one to Bargo there. Peebles is standing on deck if KT would have got on base his last at-bat. But they're the same every day with the way they work and their attitude and how they have each other's back. Um, it's the most unselfish group I've ever been a part of. And then the pitchers have been the most willing that I've ever been a part of. So I would th – this staff has been used differently and done things differently, but they're all very willing to do whatever you ask them to do, including handing you the ball. Um, you know, Stom want, wanted to talk to me about the movie Tombstone out there um, when I took the ball from his hand. And little does he know, I think you guys know there's some history with that movie in us. And then same thing, Causey, as soon as he saw me out there, I've seen that look before. He wanted no part of coming out of the game, but by the time I get to that point – you know, he's talking to his teammates about what they got to do, and he hands the ball off to Kirby. And so I would describe willing and unselfish out of those two groups, and it's nice they're in the same dugout together. On the right side toward the back. This may be a better question for the end of the season, but you say willing and unselfish. Just with those two things, how fun of a group is this to coach? Well, yeah, I mean, we're deep, deep into this whole thing, so um, there, there's obviously more work to be done. But the way a coach, a player looks at his season off this thing with the numbers and all that. Um, the way the coaches do is the whole thing starts in August. And really even before that, you're trying to recruit so that you don't have any major blind spots and the draft and all that stuff. You guys know how it can be a headache. So it starts way in advance of even opening day. And then how the fall goes and leading up to the season, that, that probably carries as much weight when you're judging, is it fun to get out of your car to walk into the office every day? And th this is, that was a goal um, as far as adding guys like Stom. Uh, his whole recruiting process was a big part of that goal. And um, since we're talking about him, he's a perfect, you know, analogy or representation of whatever the heck I'm trying to talk about is I'm just glad the guy's here. And we didn't get one guy, and we got him instead. And I don't know who's better. You can't decide that. But I know who's a lot of fun to be around, and so are the other guys. So when you park your car at Lindsey Nelson Stadium and you get out of the car, if you're in a bad mood, it changes pretty quickly. On the right side. Kavar Sears is maybe more of an underrated player than he should be, but is that something he feeds into or what's allowed him to impress as of late? Yeah, I think anything that relates to doubt, failure, adversity, that's when he takes his passion and directs it. I mean, he's he's had some blow-ups in the dugout, whether it be – and he's done a good job of not you know being a distraction with it, but it could be a, a home run or a hit. It could be something that good happened or something bad. But he's he's got a furnace in there. He's got a lot of fire to him, and so – um, when there's some challenges, like he had at our, on our campus, is you come in, you're just kind of a bopper, a guy that's got some power and not that well-rounded of a player or athlete, and you got to sit behind a lot of talented guys. That, 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 that fire drove him in, in the long term, too, or over many days, not just moments. But, yeah, he's got a lot of passion to him. On the left side, front row. Tony, uh, Slosh was just in here talking about all the home runs, and we're on pace for a – record number of home runs this week in the tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, the Big 12 leaders in the teens, that would be 11th in the SEC. Uh, why do you think that is that this league's just – that the game is uh, includes so much power, so, much, so many home runs? Yeah, I think you, got, you look at the best players can tell the story a little bit. Um, the guy that's in the middle of that lineup, Montgomery, was at Stanford. And um, – you know, one reason or another, these kids are attracted to this league um, across the country. So you're kind of piling them all up into, you know, I don't know what the average weight of the linemen is in the SEC, but I bet that's pretty high too. And it, it probably is also the highest in the country. The Big Ten people are going to throw stuff at me. but um, And then you look at a guy like Skeens. Um, yeah, the, the, I'm sure he developed and he worked hard and all that, but you go from what you have to do at the Air Force and what those people do for themselves and for us and for the Air Force Academy, and you switch over to an SEC school where we have all these resources for these kids. We have nutritionists. We, we make them get to bed. We can track their sleep. We can do everything. The better athlete gets even better. Um, so th that would be two quick ways or, or two examples. And then the guy, you know, the guy next to us, like Simo said to the ESPN guys, if he just touches it, it's going to go because he's strong. On the right, fourth row. 
Tony, you talk about wanting to check some of these boxes and some of the boxes you've already checked. What else are you trying to accomplish outside of winning the whole thing this weekend? Um, you know, it's good, in my opinion, that we get Be- Beam is a very routine orientated guy. And it's good that instead of him coming in and throwing the eighth inning or ninth inning or something, um, that he gets his start tomorrow. I don't know what we'll do pitch count wise. We'll, we'll wait to see, you know, when the game starts. And then Combs, we had kind of a set rest plan for him, kind of how we did bullpen stuff. And so he wasn't really available today. So for Kirby to did what he did was huge for us. Um, but would like to get Combsy a little action um, tomorrow. And then, you know, if you're fortunate enough to win, maybe Xander starts. But I think it'd be good to get Xander on the mound. Either way, he's always kind of the same guy every day. So those are kind of some things with the A.J. Russell, um, you know, Stom getting a good amount of work. Causey getting a good amount of work but not getting overtaxed because he's done a lot for us this year. Um, so in a decent spot. You're in a much better spot when you win the game that you're sitting here talking about, but in, in a decent spot. All right, we have time for two more, also on the right. How encouraging was kind of the perseverance from the offense to have a couple opportunities at the bases load and not really break it open after yesterday, not to be discouraged? Yeah, no, it was, it was good. And, and speaking of not discouraged, I mean, I've been generous with my phone number. There's oh so many hitting coaches out there um, when the other team scores more than you. But this is a team game. And there's a flow to the game. And yesterday, we didn't bounce back after a difficult five-run inning. Um, but the game kind of hit a certain flow. And if we pitch better or play better defense, we might score more runs. There's nine innings to hit with. But the thing kind of got out of sorts yesterday. Um, so this one, to me, was one that had a little bit better accum- You know, If you accumulate all the at-bats overall, there's no question they were better. So um, it is good they didn't get discouraged. But they've been very mature. We, we joked about that word with the Drew Gilbert thing and all that stuff. They've been very mature throughout the year. So um, you don't have to get too excited about one day, and you don't have to get too frustrated with, with another day with this group in particular. Last question on the right. Kind of building off of that with the bases loaded, obviously Emmett gets caught stealing third. Is there anything that's concerning outside of this game that you want to clear up, like the base running or take better advantage of a bases loaded situation moving forward? No, I I think if anything on the base running deal, we had the first and third with Ensley. They bring in their tough submarine guy. And uh, just a hesitation cost us, which can happen this time of year. Kids think about consequences. um, Because if you get forward and you start envisioning, what am I going to say at this press conference? And it's... You know, if we lose, we're we're out of the tournament. You can start thinking about consequences, and I'm not saying it happened there, but you got to just keep playing ball. And and normally we don't hesitate on that particular situation. But I think we just kind of had a misplay uh, on the occasion that you talked about. And again, I I think I opened with this one or the the last interview. We we certainly made mistakes um, today, but they're as strong as they are. We were talking about as good athletes as they are. They're also about 21, 22 years old, and we're going to make mistakes tomorrow too. It's about just making sure you keep playing ball throughout nine innings, and you want as few as possible. But again, you can overcome them, especially if you got the talent that's in our league. All right, Coach. Congratulations on the win today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Sounds good. You bet. Thanks, sir. How are you doing? You too.